So uh, I am Damien Lemoyle. I work at Western Digital Research in the Systems of Software Group. And I'm going to talk about zone storage support in Fedora, current status, and uh, the future for it. So as an uh, introduction, I'll give some background on zone storage devices and the kernel support history for these devices. Then uh, we'll dive right into the current status of Fedora for the uh, support for these devices. Kernel system utilities applications, also things missing currently and uh, things we're thinking uh, uh, to add and working on that can also benefit Fedora in the future. Okay, so uh, zone storage. So uh, Johannes yesterday, uh, when he made his presentation on BetterFS, gave a uh, similar background. So let me just repeat it for those who did not attend. So zone storage devices uh, come in the form of SMR, single man magnetic recording, hard disk, and NVMe uh, zone namespace, ZNS SSDs. So for hard disk, uh, the interface for this is standardized by the ZBC for SCSI uh, devices and uh, ZAC for ATA drives. And the goal with shingle mounting recording is really to increase capacity without increasing the device cost. You basically take uh, a, a regular drive, you, you get the tracks really tight together, uh, overlapping, so shingling, and uh, you get higher capacity. That's the principle of SMR. For NVMe uh, zone namespace, what you get out of uh, a zone interface for an SSD is better command latency behavior because essentially you remove the need for any device internal garbage collection. Uh, and you can also reduce the device cost by uh, reducing, for example, the amount of DRAM you need on your controller because you do not need an FTL anymore or uh, reduce the amount of flash over provisioning that you have on your device. And both uh, NVMe uh, ZNS drives and SMR hard disk, the principle uh, is the same, is that the LBA range shown by the drive or a namespace in the case of NVMe is divided into zones. Zones can have different types. For SMR, we have also conventional zones. Uh, which are zones that accept random writes. So the LBAs in these zones behave like a regular disk, but most of the zones are sequential write required zone. And these zones have to be uh, written sequentially, uh, starting at a position called a write pointer that is indicated by the disk. And you cannot rewrite uh, LBAs that you already wrote. You must reset uh, an entire zone, so uh, erasing the, uh, all the data in the zone to be able to rewrite it. And that constraint of sequential uh, write is shown to the users. Any command, any write command sent to the drive that is not sequential within the zone will be failed by the disk. So support for uh, these drives in Linux started, started way back in 2014 with kernel 3.18 which added uh, the device types. That's all it did actually. Uh, that did give some uh, access to the drive through uh, SCSI generic path through access. Uh, the real work uh, started around uh, version four of the kernel uh, with the final patch set for the initial uh, series landing in 4.10. And that gave um, really support for exposing this uh, SMR drive uh, through a, a regular uh, block device file, uh, and also uh, supporting the F2FS file system. With kernel 4.13, uh, um, device mapper support was added, uh, DM linear uh, and the new um, uh, DM zoned device mapper target were added. Uh, block MQ and SCSI MQ support uh, to avoid write command reordering landed in 4.16. Many improvements after that. Uh, then we reach 5.9, uh, more recent kernels at the beginning of this year, uh, which uh, got uh, support for NVMe ZNS drive. And with 5.12, we uh, landed the initial support for uh, SMR hard disk in better FS. 
So uh, there are other milestones. So as I said, along this timeline, there's there's lots of uh, different uh, patches that land in the kernel for improving performance, uh, improving the code. Uh, we also got the ZoneFS file system added with kernel 5.6, zone append, uh, write command emulation uh, in SCSI land in 5.8, and the encrypt support in 5.9. And we're still maintaining and improving uh, all this 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 code uh, across releases of the kernel. So uh, in Fedora, where are we? Well, first, of course, start with the kernel. Uh, as of this week, we have 5.13.6, which uh, puts us basically uh, right at the end of this timeline where we have already everything uh, supported, including better FS. So for the user, what does that, uh, sorry, uh, more details on that. Uh, so the kernel, uh, the federal kernel is compiled uh, by default with config blk dev zone enable, which uh, is the, the key config, uh, configuration option in the kernel for uh, enabling uh, zone block device support. So this enables the entire block layer, uh, IO scheduler, uh, and also the SCSI uh, NATA part of the support. Uh, this also uh, drives device mapper uh, support for these devices. There's no special uh, different uh, different option for that. So you get DM linear, DM crypt support. Uh, DM zoned uh, is also enabled uh, by default as a target in the Linux kernel, uh, in the Fedora kernel, sorry. Uh, and also uh, F2FS and BetterFS native zone support um, is enabled through this config option. So recently, uh, ZoneFS was also enabled by default. So you get that in Fedora 34 and going forward in 35. Well, uh, uh, ZoneFS is also a file system that is enabled by default. Uh, BetterFS, of course, is enabled. And uh, as long as uh, the zone block device uh, support is enabled, you get also the support for zone better FS, but beware that this is still in stabilization phase. So this is uh, functional, but there are still some kernel place cases that, that trigger problems with the, with the file system. So we're still working on that. So all this for the user, what does that mean? Basically uh, this, uh, the user, uh, has many different options for accessing uh, these device, these zone block devices, either SMR hard disk or NVMe SSDs. Of course, on the rightmost um, path here, we have direct, direct device access, so path through through, through SCSI generic or IO control uh, direct to the NVMe driver. Uh, but we also get uh, accesses directly to the uh, the block device file for the device. So I call that here zone block access because that IO pass doesn't hide the sequential write constraint to the user. So the user still has to write zone uh, sequentially. And there's the zone FS file system, which is not a POSIX file system. It's uh, uh, simply exposing uh, zones of the device as files. But the files have to be written sequentially. So it's an append only uh, files that are exposed. And so the, all these passes basically allow a uh, user to implement the uh, application as long as they're uh, zone block device compliant. So they have to write sequentially. And we do have some libraries, more on that later, for, for uh, facilitating the implementation of such applications. More interestingly is uh, the, the POSIX behavior, uh, the POSIX interfaces uh, that come on top of these devices because these interfaces basically allow any application, anything can work. Uh, the, the file system uh, with F2FS and BRFS give random uh, write access to any file. This is completely hidden. The device constraint is hidden by the file system. You can also use a legacy file system, so ext4 or xfs, any file system that doesn't have zone block device support by using the device, uh, the DM zone device mapper, which also can be used directly as a block device, a regular block device. So all of these, these um, IO pass uh, enable any application, but uh, they may not be the most optimized for these devices. You may get, depending on the use case, 
uh, writing an application that really takes advantage of, of the sequential write constraint can be uh, beneficial to performance. So this is uh, everything that application can do with the, uh, can use how application can use these devices today. So let's look at these applications, starting with uh, system utilities. Uh, what we have today in Fedora. So uh, UTL Linux, so version 2.36.2 is shipping right uh, right now. So this gives you uh, zone block device support in things utilities like uh, LSBLK or BLK, the BLK zone utility. That one actually also has ZNS support, but that uh, that is part of 2.37, so not yet in Fedora. Uh, LibLK ID also has ZoneFS support. The better FS support for LibLK ID is upstream uh, queued, but not yet uh, part of a tagged version. So we're still waiting for that to happen so that a uh, future update in Fedora uh, bring that uh, support for better FS. Better FS Pro with the Zone device uh, support for things like MKFS. Uh, was added to 5.12 uh, version of the, the package. Uh, 5.13.1 is shipping, so all good there too. And recently, uh, thanks to Neil for, uh, with a lot of help from Neil, uh, DM Zone Tools uh, and ZoneFS Tools uh, blended as new packages in Fedora. So these two are for uh, basically formatting and checking uh, ZoneFS uh, file systems and uh, DM zoned uh, device mapper targets. So since those kernel modules are also enabled with the, the kernel, uh, you get the full set here with the user, user land tools for, for these, um, these kernel uh, uh, components. So for application, that's where the support is a bit lacking um, right now. FIO does support zone block devices with the zone mode equals ZBD option. So you can at least benchmark and check that uh, the devices are working correctly. So this was added with version 3.9 of FIO. Uh, 3.26 is shipping, so no problem there. Uh, again, we're not really, uh, uh, I personally don't know of any other application that is today shipping with Fedora as a package, as an RPM that has zone block device support. I'll uh, talk about uh, what's out there in GitHub, etc. that does support that, but not yet as packages. However, I want to point out here that thanks to all the, the what I've shown uh, with, with the kernel and uh, the, the good uh, level of support for, with the system utilities, Fedora really provides a great environment for developing and testing uh, uh, application for, for zone storage. And that is what we use in our lab. We have entire racks running Fedora servers, uh, distros, and also for the uh, everyday development, that is, that is uh, what we use, Fedora. So uh, still missing, as I said, Libya KID. Uh, we need the latest version, 2.38. It's not tagged yet. Uh, that is for zone better FS. Uh, NVMe CLI, uh, so NVMe CLI has uh, also upstream uh, ZNS support, but uh, currently uh, 1.11 is shipping, but uh, that support was added to uh, 1.13. So uh, an update here uh, is in order to get ZNS device support with uh, NVMe CLI. For DMCrypt, so uh, again, that is uh, support that is enabled by default in the Fedora kernel. One thing to be aware is that the crypt setup uh, utility doesn't write sequentially uh, the, the super block information for LUX format, uh, meaning that the LUX format is not supported yet for uh, zone drives. So something we, we, uh, we are working on. There is also no LVM integration for zone device mapper targets, things like uh, DM zone. So if you have a drive that is formatted with DM zone and using a file system on it, uh, LVM will not, not detect that and uh, prepare the drive on boot, for example, for, for you. That is something you will have to do uh, manually. 
Okay, so going forward, uh, what are we going to do? So uh, right now with the kernel, our main activity is to stabilize uh, better FS so that again, back to that picture of all the IO paths that the user has access to, uh, if we have a very solid uh, IO pass that gives the user a POSIX interface, so meaning that anything random read and write, uh, random uh, writes to, to a file to the device work, any application can work. So having a solid better FS that supports as ENS and SMR uh, is, we think, very important. So that is our main activity. Uh, again, it is functional. You can try it out today, but there are some kernel cases that uh, that create problems. So one uh, area where we um, identify some problem, uh, we understand the problem. We're just trying to find the best way to fix them. Is uh, rebalancing, which is something that is done uh, with BetterFS on regular drives too, but is more important on a zone BetterFS because rebalancing will reclaim. Uh, zones that have a lot of, of garbage blocks that cannot be uh, used anymore. So rebalancing is also used to reclaim space on the on the zone drive. So it's a very important part of the zone support. There are also other small bugs and issues. Um, we ha we have an issue tracker uh, using GitHub uh, to to track everything. So um, if you're interested in contributing. Uh, these are the areas where uh, you can start right away to uh, patch and, and send patches and contributions. For better FS going forward, we have also planned some improvements. The, the main one is declustered parity. Uh, so the reason we want to add that is that we, we get regularly a lot of requests for uh, from, from users. Uh, how do I uh, use my SMR drives in a red environment with, with protection basically for data? And the answer is you cannot. There is nothing out there today that does that. And uh, adding um, support for um, BetterFS Red uh, to Zone BetterFS would uh, achieve that level of protection that, that, uh, that users uh, want. Uh, however, a uh, regular red uh, system with, with fixed stripe uh, uh, with, with the block uh, position in a block group, depending on basically simply an offset, is not possible because you cannot overwrite that on a zone drive. So we have to decluster everything and add a stripe tree to uh, support that on, on zone drive. We do have other projects going on, uh, exploratif, uh, explore. Uh, exploratory projects. Uh, since we are we are a researching entity uh, within Motion Digital, we, we can uh, we get to play with, with different things. And uh, related to, again, RED and uh, declustered parity, we're also thinking of um, implementing a, a device mapper target that does that for other uh, file system besides BetterFS. So a lot of uh, things going on. A lot of work going on in the kernel uh, still today. For libraries and applications, so we have many things that, that will be coming very soon. Uh, again, uh, fully functional BRFS, but that will uh, come with, uh, also, with, that will depend on the kernel and libblk ID being updated. Uh, as mentioned before, we do have a couple of libraries that can help uh, users implement applications that access directly drive. One is libzbc, uh, the other one is libzbd. So one is a path through for SMR drive. The other one is uh, a regular um, library that basically wraps the kernel API IO control into a set of uh, uh, easier to use functions. And it works for both SMR and uh, NVMe ZNS. Both are actually used out there in the field, uh, either by upstream projects or uh, actually deployed uh, by services, commercial services uh, on the net. We also, uh, so I'm working on actually packaging those. So uh, if uh, you see a new package request coming, probably from me, that will be these two. Uh, RocksDB, uh, we also have support for 
a new uh, plugin for WorksDB called ZenFS, which supports uh, ZNS Drive. So you can, with this plugin, you can basically run WorksDB directly on top of a ZNS Drive without any file system in between. That essentially uh, achieve a write amplification of one, meaning the write amplification is completely removed. You still, of course, uh, have the write amplification from the LSM3 implementation of RocksDB itself, but uh, no write amplification at all uh, on the device side, uh, considering only the, the IOs going to the drive. So this depends uh, on RocksDB 6.19. Uh, dot three, which added the uh, external plugin support. Uh, however, Fedora today is shipping 6.15. So again, an update uh, would be needed here so that we can uh, submit uh, uh, ZFS as a package. There is also uh, work going on uh, with Ceph. So um, Sajwell, uh, um, Ceph team, is helping Abu Talib to uh, add support to the, the Blue Store engine for SMO Drive. So it's a native support. So the, the Blue Store engine directly accesses the uh, SMO Drive through uh, the block device file. There's no file system in the way. Again, less uh, less less code between the data and the the drive for better performance and um, uh, reduced overhead. Uh, I. Not aware yet of the timeline. I know there's a lot of discussion. I'm, I'm getting emails from uh, um, almost every week. So it is ongoing, but I'm not aware of the actual uh, release schedule for this. Uh, and so that's all I, I have. Uh, as a conclusion, again, I want to really state that Ferro is a, uh, an awesome environment for, for zone storage. Uh, basically, the drives uh, simply work out of the box. Uh, just plug them in, uh, boot, and you will be able to use them. That is unlike many other distros out there. Uh, and that's why we actually recommend Fedora to um, to even our customers for, for testing and developing uh, anything related to zone storage. As mentioned, there are still uh, many things missing from the uh, zone storage ecosystem. So help is welcome. And we uh, we would be happy to mentor uh, any beginner uh, students. We do take uh, also um, uh, interns. Uh, if if uh, you know people that are interested in this, uh, in, in that area of work, we uh, students, we can, uh, we can, we accept interns. So this is uh, something we can do too. Uh, everything, Related to Linux and zone storage, we uh, document uh, everything we know uh, of, everything we do on the website zonestorage.io. The website content itself is actually open source on GitHub. So you can contribute if you know of other aspects of zone storage, any application that work on zone storage that you want uh, to advertise. We, uh, you can send a pull request for um, uh, for this website. It's written with MK docs, so it's markdown format for everything. So it's very easy to generate new content. New content. Uh, there is also a Linux distribution page where I list up different distros and their uh, level of support for, um, for zone storage. And that's all I have for today. So I'm open for question. Well, okay, As you see, I, I reached the conclusion slide. Okay, so that is really the worst presentation ever I did. I'm sorry about that. I went to presentation mode and couldn't see the chat. Okay, so anyway, uh, I, I hope I spoke clearly enough and you got the idea of the message I wanted to um, uh, convey. So if you have any question, you need any clarification since you didn't see the slides, I can show, uh, give more detail showing the slides now. Okay, so better FS question. 
With zone block devices, how does that affect performance with sub volume snapshot and other refing type stuff? Uh, so that would be more a question for Johannes and now Hero. I do not think it really affects anything. Uh, it doesn't change because these are typically well uh, features implemented from the um, uh, the B trees, the Merita, and uh, I don't think there is any change in that area of specific to zone better FS. But again, uh, now Hiro and Johannes would be better suited answering that one. I'm, uh, I'm more busy with the block layers, SCSI ATA and NVMe than better FS. So. More general Zines question. Is there any effort planned to improve VM disk IO performance on ZNS? Um, so the performance uh, for, for ZNS essentially is the same as a regular SSD. Uh, the interface, um, the, I mean, the, uh, the way the, the commands are changed with the device doesn't change. It's still the same. Uh, Q pairs and, and uh, command descriptors. So all that doesn't change. Uh, what does change in terms of performance is the need to, to write sequentially, which uh, uh, very often, uh, uh, for, at least for regular writes, um, requires synchronization, which can slow down the write pass on ZNS. But for the device interface and in the context of a VM itself, uh, ZNS and regular uh, NVMe SSDs do not differ at all. And I'm not, a, um, there was a lot of work, uh, I think a couple, two, three years back to try to uh, avoid VM uh, entry and exits every time, for example, the, the device, the, the uh, the Q pairs, the doorbells for the, the, the Q pairs were hit uh, when sending uh, commands. Uh, but I'm, I'm not I'm not sure where, where that went. So for SMR drive, uh, for VM, uh, yes, uh, we that's on our on my, on my to do list for a while now. Um, the name escapes me now, but um, uh, Virtio, we need we need basically a zone interface for Virtio. Virtio drives the, the the drive interface, the command interface for Virtio. The, the specification has nothing for for um, for zones, so you don't get the equivalent of zone reset, report zone, etc. So that that is something you cannot pass through Virtio. So you have to go the hard way and either direct attach your SMR drive or use uh, basically the um, virus SCSI interface, which is uh, slower. But it's an HGD, so the, the software pass is slower, but that doesn't make the accessing the, the device really slower at all. It's bad for the VM or, or the host because you get more CPU overhead, but not really uh, any overhead on the, on the device side. Okay, I think it's time. So everybody, I'm really sorry about the slides. I really, I think that's because I didn't share my entire screen and shared only a window and going to presentation mode that didn't work. Very sorry about that. Uh, if you need the slide as PDF to put together with the recording, I'll be happy to provide that. So thank you everybody for your, for attending this session.